Could this be the future of travel in Alberta's busiest corridor? A rocket-shaped vehicle shuttling passengers through a futuristic track between our province's two largest cities in as short a time as it takes to fly between Calgary and Edmonton. It is the vision of Sebastien Jandreau, co-founder and CEO of the Canadian tech startup Transpod, and he joins us from Toronto this evening. Sebastian, you're, you're proposing Hyperloop systems for a number of locations in North America, even even abroad, what, what makes Alberta the ideal location for the first Hyperloop? Oh, you know what? There is many reasons. Um, first, we started the conversation with the uh, Alberta government uh, since the beginning. And, uh, and then there's interest. The corridor is pretty ideal. Uh, is re relatively short. Uh, we're talking about 300 kilometers between uh, Calgary and Edmonton. It's flat. It's low density. Uh, there's interest to uh, diversify the uh, the economy and uh, and to also uh, uh, create jobs, of course, boost the economy and uh, of course leverage as well the expertise from the uh, oil and gas existing oil and gas industry because it's quite similar for sure. And, and the route is a it's a straight shot between the two cities. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you many. Um, Many people from the province are driving that highway uh, um, several times uh, uh, per month or per year, I would say. And uh, the corridor will follow the uh, highway too, and which is pretty, uh, pretty straight. And, and a stop in Red Deer along the way? Yeah, so the, the scenario would be to, uh, to have uh, four stops uh, to start uh, behind the, uh, the city hall in Calgary, so Calgary downtown. Uh, one stop in, uh, at the airport in Calgary, one stop in Red Deer, and the last one uh, at the Edmonton air Airport. So that's, that's the scenario we proposed uh, uh, so far. Okay, we, we gave it a, a brief description off the top, but what, what exactly is the Hyperloop? So the Hyperloop system is actually a, a, a concept which has been popularized recently by Elon Musk uh, in 2013, to be precise. And it talks about um, a tube transportation system which consists of putting vehicles the size of a train coach in a, a low-pressure tube uh, where you remove most of the air to avoid aerodynamic friction and uh, allow the, those vehicles to, um, to travel at the same speed of an aircraft thanks to aerodynamic, uh, no, thanks to um, uh, electromagnetic uh, propulsion and levitation system. So that's the, and it's not new, that's something which has been around for many years, mm -hmm. but again popularized uh, recently and, and as of today there's many companies developing that and that's clearly the future of transportation. And we're just looking at some of the footage there. It would shuttle both passengers and freight? Yeah, the, the beauty of that is that you can maximize revenue uh, compared to conventional uh, railway track where you can interline passenger vehicle and freight vehicle. Uh, but when we talk with, about freight, we're talking about everything sensitive to time. The objective is not to compete against, uh, I would say, CN or CP and uh, transport a ton of iron or any kind of natural resources, but everything related to uh, e-commerce and uh, and food and then of course adding passengers on top of it and uh, you have a second line of revenue to to maximize the profitability of such corridor it looks like a six billion dollar uh, price tag and and funded entirely by the private sector so how, how much of a business case is there to make this a profitable enterprise for investors so the, the good news is that uh, uh, there is kind of enough liquidity on the market today to finance infrastructure projects. Uh, recently, even the, uh, uh, the, the federal government, they set up the infrastructure bank to actually boost infrastructure projects. And uh, we have um, discussion with Canadian pension fund and sovereign fund, which were ready to uh, finance uh, those projects. So the only thing we're looking at today is really a political support uh, to uh, showcase those potential investors that there's a pass to contract. Uh, and then after that step is, uh, is approved, I would say, it's to secure, of course, the financing and, uh, and execute the project. So we're not, uh, yeah, we're not asking uh, uh, public funds uh, as we speak. Okay, so what, what kind of a commitment then are you looking to the Alberta government for at this stage? 
is really to uh, back up the project. Uh, as you may know, um, it's new, uh, it's innovation. Uh, today we talk a lot about innovation, but there's not so many, I would say, countries and, and people serious or who have the courage to, uh, to develop that because behind true innovation, uh, there is a, a uh, I would say, a certain amount of, uh, of risk because the technology may not work. But in that case, if we're capable to showcase those investors that there is a path to contract, uh, they're willing to take the risk. And if worst case scenario, the technology doesn't work, we will dismantle uh, that initial track uh, we've been discussing with, uh, with the government. Okay, so that's, that's, I understand that's a 10 kilometer long track between Didsbury and Oles, and that's, that's a chance to, to test and, and to determine the, the, the safety of, of what you're dealing with. Yeah, so part of the, we have different phases regarding this project. Uh, the first phase is really to have uh, 10 kilometers uh, to validate all the system performance and all the safety requirements uh, for, uh, to be compliant uh, uh, with the uh, uh, regulation. And uh, the former government, uh, uh, the NDP government, actually gave us 10 kilometers of land uh, between like Red Deer and, uh, and, and Calgary. And so the next step, like for next year, so this year it's to uh, seek, seek the approval from the government and next year it's to of course secure uh, the financing and go with uh, the administrative uh, work like construction permit and all the authorization to get it done and built uh, by 20, uh, 2030, uh, yeah, 20, 2030. And then after that, we we need we will need two years of testing between 2030, uh, 2030 and uh, and 2025. And after 2025, we aim to of course receive the certification and start the construction of the full line between uh, Edmonton and Calgary. Okay, one more quick question for you. Albertans are, are feeling the strain of a, of a very challenged economy right now. How, how do you convince residents of, of this province that this is the right project and the right time? So first of all, there is nothing to lose because like I said, uh, um, if, there is, if the technology doesn't work, we'll dismantle those 10 kilometer track and it will go where it was uh, before. So it's really like to be able to take the lead and develop that new transportation and clearly put uh, the province at the forefront of innovation. Uh, it's something which has been developed uh, worldwide. Uh, we have projects in the Middle East, there is projects in Europe. Uh, there is a strong collaboration today between uh, uh, Europe and, uh, and Canada. We have half of our activities uh, between those two countries. Mm -hmm. It can create jobs uh, in the province. So, Really, it's, we just need to take a, a leap forward and that project can definitely be a game changer and contribute to the uh, diversification of the province. So, um, yeah, let's do it. Well, well, we'll certainly keep an eye on it with you. Appreciate your time this evening, sir. Thank you kindly. Thank you very much. Sebastien Gendreau, co-founder and CEO of the Canadian tech startup, TransPod. Up next...